but this morning I have a, a strange piece and I want to share a couple of things, you know, about our journey, you know, in the hospital. Most everybody here is aware of our journey, but I just wanted to thank my beautiful, loving wife for being my rock. You know, I, I've been, people have told me, you're so strong, you're, you're, I don't see how you hold yourself up and prop your family up. And a lot of my backbone comes from right up here on the front row. I love you with all my heart. And my two-year-old, so he wasn't doing laps in here, you know. I didn't want this to be a, a time of crying, but I mean, it, it's, it's very sad. You know, our selfishness of wanting to not hurt and keep this baby here, I'm the same way. I have shed more tears in the last two and a half months than I have in an entire lifetime. But thank you for being my support. And thank you for giving Darby Kate such a wonderful mother while she was here. And I think about her name, Darby Kate. You know, what a unique name. She was, she was bound to make an impact just by her name. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Darby is Brittany's mother's maiden name. And Kate just sounded good with it. <laughs> so there's, there's Darby Kate. But when, I, when you hear Darby Kate in the future, I think she's probably made that, that name popular. <laughs> but when you hear that name in the future, I want you to think about what a warrior she was to God in two and a half months of her life with never speaking a word. That's powerful. That is very powerful. I want to, when we first found out, you know, she was born on March 19th, and we found out that she was sick on the 20th. And when we found out that she was going to be life lighted to children's, you know, as any person would do, especially a cop, <laughs> we're gone. Well, on our way over there, me and Brittany prayed for our little baby, and we made a covenant within our covenant. You know, we, we said, it's me and you against the world. This kind of stuff will rip a marriage apart if we do not stick together and thank you for being the other side of that glue because I feel like we are closer now than we've ever been well we get over there and Brittany said I promised God that I would not question why I said I didn't make that promise <laughs> I did God, why me? Why us? You know, I've tried to do good. I've tried to live a Christian life. I know that I'm a sinner. But what have I done so bad to deserve this? You know, kill me. Give me a bad heart. You know, put me in her place. I would give anything to take that baby's place. But that wasn't God's plan. You know, the fact is, like the preacher said, the fire that burns the fastest burns the hottest. And wow, was she hot. And I would not have had the same impact as, as her up here, as her through that journey. You know, I created the, I had my sister create the, the Facebook, the prayer page just because we were getting you know, call after call, how's she doing, how's she doing? I said, we're going to have to do something a little different here, you know, so we can focus on our baby. So we started that as really a way to update our family, update our friends on how our baby was doing, how we were doing. And when it hit a 1,000 people, I can remember saying, wow, I don't know a 1,000 people. <laughs> and then it hit... 3,000, 5,000, 8,000, 10,000. 
you know, and just about went to 11,000. And it wasn't right here in the Birmingham area. It was all over the world. All over the world. I, I would not have been able to have that same impact. So we got there, and as a dad, I just want to crawl up in the fetal position, suck my thumb, and ask for my mommy. You know, there's nothing that hurts like watching your child lay there. And especially being in law enforcement, you're used to being the decision maker. You're used to being the, the one that, that made things better. And for the first time in my life, in our lives, we were the one in handcuffs. There's not one thing that you can do for that baby except pray. And I found out right then about the, the, the feel-good Christian coffee cup logic. God won't put more on you than you can handle. That's not true. If that was true, I, I would be, I'll be the first one to tell you that helo pad on top of the children's, I'd have done a nosedive off of it. I, I guarantee you that was more than we could handle as a family, as an individual. That was more than we could handle without God's help. You know, having said that, I do firmly believe that if God brings you to it, that He will bring you through it. But do not ever think that God will not put, you, put more on you than you can handle. If that was true, you wouldn't need God. And I'm here to tell you, we needed God more than ever. We knew God, but we didn't know God. And I feel like through this, I feel like everything is backwards. As a dad, as a parent, it's my job to teach my daughter about God about religion, about caring, about loving, about respect, manners, everything in her life. It's my job to teach her. Brittany's job to teach her. Well, guess what? Everything with her was in reverse order. You know, people have questioned, well, why didn't they find it before she was born? That was in God's plan. That was in God's plan. The only thing that would have been different if they would have found it before they did, was we would have not had that first 24 hours with that baby as a normal child. She was delivered. Here's your healthy baby. Oh, love, love. We got to hold her. We got to hold her. You know, uh, I got to see, you know, with the first one, I was kind of the one that was, you know, the, the, the hands-on one the first with, to start with. With this one, Brittany's my baby. <laughs> my baby. I got to love on her and got to hold her, but I saw a bond between Brittany and Darby Kate that, that can't be matched by a father. It was a mother's love for her child. Now, don't get me wrong. She was the same way with Will once she realized he wouldn't break. <laughs> but she taught me and she taught Brittany so much during her short life. You know, she taught me what it was to love. She taught me what it was to realize that none of us are promised tomorrow. Every day we have on this earth is a gift. So when you think of Darby Kate, kiss your wife, kiss your husband, hug your kids tighter because just because you're not standing up here where I am today doesn't mean that I won't be coming to yours tomorrow. I can assure you there's no worse feeling than being up here with your child, but while you've got your child with you, let them know how much you love them. Do not leave yourself guessing if you were the one left behind thinking, did they know how much I love them? Do they know how much I care about them? You know, funny story, this has made us realize that we wanted more kids. And, you know, we're going to use God's plan this time. And it just, 
Will, through this, we have just, he's been our rock too. We have clinged to him. Well, now he went from being a baby that slept all through the night, being a baby that slept in his own bed, <laughs> to now his nickname's birth control. He's between mom and daddy. <laughs> he, he, he is, he is right, right in between me and Brittany. And, you know, he is, he's just a, a, a loving two-year-old. And, you know, we didn't have him here today because we felt like he would not understand the significance of this event, but he would understand the crying and the hurting. And we didn't want to scare him. And, you know, we're recording this, so he will have the chance to know, you know, his sister. You know, we have documented her two and a half months every day, all you know, along the way. And we have done that, you know, primarily for him, you know, so he will know what an impact Darby Kate had on the world. And to give him, you know, a little sibling competition. He's got a long ways to go to be the warrior <laughs> she was. So... But anyways, going back to the hospital, the first night we were there, we didn't really know the significance of what was going on until we got there. And I'll never be able to thank the nurses, the staff, the doctors, everybody at the Children's Hospital enough. Me and Brittany have talked about, you know, y'all are our family. Y'all are our family. And we love each and every one of y'all. But when we got there, it was a compassion. I felt like we were treated as well as Darby Kate was treated. We were nurtured. We were loved. We were, we were brought back there, and, and they explained stuff in process because I can, everybody that knows me knows I, I, there ain't no medical mind in here. And, and it was a process of this is, what, this is what you got. And, of course, I'd be like, well, you have to dumb that down. He said, that's my dumb version. I said, well, I'm going to need the dumb dumb. So he got his crayon out. <laughs> and they wrote on the board so I would comprehend the, you know, the, the magnitude of what she had wrong with her. And I kind of understood it. We talk, I talked to Brittany. We had a, a basic understanding. Of, we really don't understand it, but we had a basic understanding of you know, what the heart does, what's wrong with her heart. And as a private crier, I said, Brittany, I'll be back. And I walked down the halls. And I'm having a private time with God. And I'm saying, you know, God, why me? Why us? What have we done? Well, anybody that's been to Children's knows about the, the, the wagons. There's like 500 of them all over the place. And there was a wagon right in the middle of the lobby, right in the river. They tell you to follow the river everywhere you go. Well, I'm walking, and to keep somebody from tripping on it, the, the handle's down. I pick up this wagon, and I read in the bottom of it, and it was Proverbs 5 and 6. Proverbs 5 and 6 Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean unto your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all ways and He shall direct your paths. I got it, God. Thank you. <laughs> I felt like I got slapped from above. I pulled the, pulled the car and I, I said, I've got I to leave this. I run back up there and I'm like, Brittany, you ain't going to believe this. I bring her down there and let her see what I saw, and it, it was wow. Well, seven or eight times during our stay there, you know, our, my daily devotional, that those verses would show up. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean unto your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all ways, and He, He will direct your paths. So that's what I made my motto. I've got to acknowledge him in every way I can possibly acknowledge him, and he'll, he will direct where I go from here. 
where we go from here as a family, the way we raise Will, the way we, I mean, it, everything was so complex there for a little while. I mean, we had a lot of decisions that were going to affect our family. And that's, that's the verse that, that really helped. Me as a father, Brittany as a mother, you know, kind of merged things. And I want to say one more thing. This whole situation made me see John 3.16 in color. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I'm sure everybody in here has heard that verse a hundred times. But I want you to go with me somewhere real quick. I want you to think about it the way that it has become clear to me. I want you to not think about the whole world, but I want you to think in your mind right now of all the people that have stolen from you, that have done you wrong in any kind of way in your life, whether it be something you're remembering from the playground back in elementary school, or whether it be, you know, the person that stole your lawnmower, the person that did you wrong. And I'm talking about if there's any, if there's any victims of a violent crime in here, I'm sorry, but take your mind there. Put the perpetrator that violated you Take the perpetrator that stabbed you, that shot you. Put them in this little box. And I want you to think about them. Not the whole world, the people that have done you wrong, the people that have mocked you, made fun of you. You look over there and they're laughing at you. Put them in this little box. Now, I want you to think about all the people in that box that have done you wrong. And now I want you to take your only child, or, or if you have multiple child, pick a child. That's even better. Pick a child. And I want you to bring them up here to me. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you, it's not going to be a quick death. I'm going to mock them. I'm going to spit on them. I'm going to beat them repeatedly with a whip that has a little barb on the end of it that just cuts their skin every time I hit them with it. And I'm going to do this for hours and hours and hours. And then I'm going to put a crown of thorns on their head, mocking them, and then I'm going to pour vinegar in that wound to make sure they really feel it. And then when they're near death, I'm going to hang them from a cross in the radial nerve so they cannot pull up to relieve any of that pain. This is your child right now. And you're not doing that for the whole world. You're doing that for the people in that box. You're doing that for the people that have done you wrong. The people that have spit on you. The people that have tortured you. You're doing that for them. And I want you to ask yourself, would you do it? I'm going to tell you right now, I would not do it. Everybody goes to hell if it's my baby that has to sacrifice, that I have to give up to save the people that have mocked me, that have spit on me, that have stolen from me. That's, I'm just telling you, I am not capable of that kind of love. And now I want you to take those people out and I want you to broaden your box and put everybody in the world in that box. That's God's box. You're the sinner. I'm the sinner. We are the sinners that are not worthy of God's love. God gave His Son knowing exactly full well what would happen when He turned His child over to people that would mock Him, beat Him, Have you got that kind of love in you? And the peace that brings us, or, or what brings me and Brittany peace, is knowing that that love exists. 
knowing that a love that we are not capable of having exists. And who better to leave your child with long term than somebody that loves him more than you can even comprehend loving your child? Who better to leave your child with? I'm here to tell you, the greatest injustice that you can do, Darby Kate, the greatest injustice you can do, my family, your family, and most importantly, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is to leave here lost. To leave here today without a fire for God. The greatest injustice that you can do this baby up here, which we're all mourning, this is not me up here. I've prayed that God to use me as a vessel to, to get His Word across because I, I, cannot, I cannot stand the thought. I mean, it's the most horrible thing I've ever imagined. But the, the, the biggest injustice that you can do is to leave here not knowing God as your Lord and Savior. You know, I found myself when I'm by myself and crying and saying, God, you know, please just show, just please just let me give me a, I mean, show me something. Why? Why? And I really think that it's to keep me and Brittany in line. I found myself, you know, God, please just come back to earth. This is hell on earth. What we're having to deal with right now is hell on earth. This is my baby, God. You know that. You know how it feels. How... I, it just makes sense of it to me, God. And I just felt this overwhelming peace about, hey, you're not ready to go to heaven yet. You're not ready to be with her. Look what she's done in two months. You've had 34 years. Have I got one check mark? I don't have confirmation of it because I can't take credit for the ones that I know have come to God through her situation. Those are hers. I've never had that opportunity. She has gotten me over a hump. I've had so many times to witness to people, so many times to take the high road, and I'll be like, God, I want to, but I'm scared. And those of you that know me know that I'm not scared to talk. I was just scared of the ridicule. Oh, here comes a Bible thumper. What's he got to say today? Well, I'm here to tell you, I'm not changed as a person. I have, I have definitely changed as a warrior, though. I'm not going to be afraid if I question whether you are a Christian. I will ask you if you're a Christian. Because God let me know full well that you're not ready for my return. If I came back right now, you have failed your job. You have failed at what you were put here to do. People around you that you know, people around you that you love will perish. And it's your job, everybody in here's job, to make sure that the people that you love and care about are going to heaven are going to have that everlasting life. You know, a hundred years is a long time here on earth. Eternity is what you will have after this. Eternity is a long time, people. Eternity is a long time. You know, I'd like to think of little Darby Kate when she gets there, just being able to hold her like a baby. You know, I'm not ready to go home yet because I know I have failed at my mission. And I ask you to dig deep 
and ask yourself right now, have you done what is necessary to do for the people around you that you know and you, and you say you love to have everlasting life? And that's what, you know, people have asked t- countless times, what can we do for your family? They've asked Brittany that. They've asked me that. They've asked everybody, what can we do for their family? Well, I'm here to tell you, if anybody asks you what you can do for my family, I'm going to tell you what you can do for our family. Be a warrior for God. Be a warrior for God. Whenever you think about Darby Kate, I want you to think about what amazing things that she did. The evangelist that she was without even saying a word. And there's, there might be a couple of little babies in here, but everybody else has the ability to talk. Ask. Learn. You know, this has forever changed my life. And I feel like I now know a personal relationship with God like I've never known before. I told y'all I wasn't going to go by these notes. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop because of the time. But I ask you, if God come back right now, are you ready? If God come back right now, are the people around you that you know and love, are they ready? You know, don't question. Don't question that. All right, now, for a little lighter note, I really... Will everybody from children stand up, please? Would everybody please give these people a round of applause? (laughs) What y'all do? on a daily basis, the selfless service that you give all of these families, whether they let you know that or not, means more than you'll ever know. Like I said, we consider y'all family, and we've really been homesick. It's, it's, you know, Sunday afternoon, we were sitting around, and I just wanted to say, Brittany, one of us needs to, one of us needs to Go back to the hospital. You know, they're going to think that they got to take care of our baby. You know, y'all selfless service. We love y'all. And y'all will always be our family. And I want you to tell everybody that didn't have the opportunity to come here today that I know would be here if they weren't taking care of other kids. Tell them thank you for us, please. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. You cannot win every battle, but guess what? We have won. She's a lot better than anybody in this place. She is a lot better. And we are trying to get past the selfish part of wanting her here. She will always be a part of us. And when I think of her, I can just think of God giving her a standing ovation. I can think of him, you know, well done. And I can hear him telling me, get, to work, get back to work, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to try to do from now on. But thank, thank you. Um, as all y'all know, we all, me and Brittany both work for the ABC board. I'd like to thank the ABC board for, for allowing us to spend two and a half months with our baby. Two and a half months we got to spend with her. And I know our, my God is good. And God will take care of the, the stuff that comes after this. I'm not concerned with the bills and all that right now. And I cannot thank everybody enough for what they've already done. You know, just the words of support just have, have just carried our family through. They really have. 
apologize for being a little long-winded. I had like 10 minutes of notes prepared and got a little long-winded. So God bless each, of, each and every one of y'all. And please take what I said to heart. Please be on fire for God. Please ask yourself if you are ready. If he came back right now, are you ready? And ask yourself if he came back, are the people around me that I know and love ready? Thank you.